Good everyone, bonjour tout le monde, this is Roger, and welcome to another episode of Bravery in Arms BIED Day Dodgers of Canada 2021. We're on our way right now to Reggio Calabria. On the 3rd of September 1943, the 1st Canadian Infantry Division, the Red Patch Devils, were selected to lead the way of the invasion to Italy. It was a complete Canadian show involving Canadian landing craft escorted by Canadian Spitfire Squadron. At 0430 hours, 3rd Brigade led the way to the invasion to a beach near Reggio Calabria uh, that was codenamed Fox and it was divided in two zones, Amber and Green. The West Nova Scotia Regiment would land on Amber and uh, Carlton, the Carlton and York Regiment land in Green. They were followed by the Royal 22e Regiment and by the rest of the division that were uh, straight behind. As they were crossing over, there was a heavy artillery and naval bombardment to support the landing. Happily, it was an unopposed landing, and by 0546 hours, the beach was declared secured. The Canadians had landed in continental Italy and were there to stay. We are on the early morning hours of 3rd September. 3rd Brigade, 1st Canadian Infantry Division is landing on this very beach where we're standing. There was a British division as well who landed left of that point on my left. The West Nova Scotia Regiment landed on the left flank and the Carlton and York Regiment left it on the right flank with the Royal 22e Regiment following really close behind. As soon as the West Nova Scotia Regiment landed, they went for their own unit objectives, which was Hill 307, and then after that, two gun battery positions and fortress overlooking the town. The Carlton and York Regiment aimed south toward um, a series of small towns south of Reggio, making sure that the aerial drone was secured for future operations. The Royal Van Duzem Regiment landed and headed up the hills further inland to secure the beachhead for the divisions to follow behind. So let's backtrack a little bit before we go any further. On July 25th, Mussolini was disposed by his own people and Badoglio, the new acting president of Italy, was trying to broker a deal for a truce with the Allies. Hitler, knowing that this was coming, started to pour more divisions from the north and took upon him the defense of Italy. When the Royal 22nd Regiment started their ascent from Reggio Calabria, they made their way up to a small village up in the Aspro Mountains uh, called Terreti that sits at 545 meters in altitude. At the beginning of the evening, as the Vendus were uh, protecting the sector around here, the 48 Highlanders who had landed in the afternoon at Reggio, at the sound of their bagpipes, uh, were, passed through the Royal Van um, lines and made all their way to the little town of Straurini, where they stopped for the night. The Hastings and Presidor Regiment were at Mount Calia, and by the time they stopped for, uh, and, and regrouped for the night, they were, at, they were sitting at 1,000 meters above sea level. They had met no resistance at all on the 3rd of September, and have rounded up over 3,000 prisoners of war. In, in the, the description of the terrain, when we go in the 
in the, of the Astro Mountain as we're going up right now to from Reggio to the top of the Astro Mountain. It describes how the deep gorges, steep, uh, steep hills, steep mountains with deep gorges. So just have a look at this. This is unbelievable. Oh, you can see on the far the side of the, this mountain at the far side, deep, deep, deep ravines and gorges. With the clouds, it makes it unbelievably beautiful. All right, so I'm going for a little walk up the Aspro Mountain, and I'm on my way to Gambari, where the 48 Highlanders slept, um, passed the night on the, the 4th of September. So let's go up. It's very steep with the rain, it, uh, that would makes it terrible. I wouldn't want to fight in the forest all wet like that, the rain coming down. Up here in the mountains, it's pure forest. And in Gambari, there will be a lot of action. We we'll actually, we got some stories to tell you about what's gonna happen in Gambari. Pretty steep. I think the Canadians are used to fight, to travel in this type of terrain. And that's why Montgomery nicknamed them the mountain goats. Now I can't imagine how those uh, the soldiers felt when they came from the tropical climate of the of Sicily and up in the mountains, they must have uh, been cold for a few nights there to adapt to this new climate. Oh, Gambari this way. Let's carry on. Oh, <laughs> and by the way, if it ain't raining, it ain't training. <laughs> So now I, now I just arrived in the outskirts of Gambari, in a pine forest that uh, we read that the 48 Highlanders reached and uh, on the night of 4 September. And this is where there was the first Canadian unit who get uh, into contact with the enemy. They had a very one-sided skirmish with a group of black shirt militia, Italian black shirt militia. And, uh, at the end of the skirmish, they had a very nice booty of uh, many machine guns, anything guns, and 200 folding bicycle that Bravo Company put in good use to reach Delia Nuova, which is about 24 kilometers past Gambari. On September 6, the Canadian Infantry Division had reached the town of Dilia Nuova, which is, stands right behind me. And on the 7th of September, 2nd Brigade took, uh, continued the advance towards Sitanova, led by the Loyal Edmonton Regiment. As they were making their way towards Sitanova, the Loyalities got engaged by a group of uh, about 100 Italian paratroopers that put up a good, a good fight. According to Lieutenant Colonel Jefferson, these guys were professionals and they knew what they were doing. However, they, they continued their advance towards Tenova. On the next day, the West Nova Scotia Regiment, as they were like uh, setting up their bivouac for the night, clashed into the same group of paratroopers. Lieutenant Colonel Burger deployed a company to do an outflanking maneuver and led the Italians to the, the edge of a ravine. The Italians surrendered, and, but it was like at the cost of uh, six men killed and 57 prisoners. The West Nova Scotia Regiment also lost two of their men. It shouldn't have never happened because we were no longer at war with Italy at that time, but nobody knew it.
I'm in the town of Lorenzano right now, which was a village along the route that the Canadians took to Potenza in 1943. When the Canadians landed at Reggio the 3rd September and started their climb, three-day climb, all the way to the town of um, Citanova, which was a ski resort that sat about 1,400 meters above sea level. According to Frale at story, every night for three days, it downpoured rain, rain and rain and more rain. And the poor Canadians dressed in their tropical gear at the time, the only cover they had for the rain was the large pine trees where they could sit in and wait for the day for the rain to stop so their clothes can dry a little bit. That was quite a change from the tropical temperatures of Sicily. On September 8, General Montgomery was putting some pressure on General Simmons for the Canadians to move faster. But it was impossible to do that as long as they were bogged down in the trails of the Aspro Mountains. The idea was to keep the Germans distracted from the landing that was about to take place in Salerno by the US 5th Army. So General Simmons decided to form what they called the X-Force and move some Canadians away from the mountains down to the coastal highway 106 all the way to Catanzaro. The officer that was chosen to lead this force was Lieutenant Colonel Neruzzo's of the Calgary Tank Regiment accompanied by a company of um, the Carlton and York Regiment, the machine guns of the Saskatchewan Light Infantry, plus a troop of engineers and uh, anti-tank guns. These guys went down the mountains, flew the high along the coastal highway. So as the X-Force was flying along the coastal highway, the only contact they made was a, a submarine that was sitting in one of the bay. And uh, they didn't engage the submarine because they didn't know if it was a friendly submarine or an enemy submarine, so they left it alone. So they reached Catanzaro, but the rest of the division was following on foot you know, like most of them coming down the mountains. As they were uh, approaching Catanzaro, the commanding officer of the Hastington Prince Edward Regiment was worried that a division of Italian that was still sitting up in the mountains wouldn't be aware that uh, Italy was not, Italy was not at war anymore with the Allies and maybe they would want to cause some trouble or put a fight with them. So uh, he ordered his intelligence officer mount aboard a motorcycle with a, one of his sergeant and reach and, and try to find this division and then come back and report when they find it. So our small motorized recce group going up the mountain stumbles into an Italian sentry without waiting for his reaction, do a quick about turn, hard hang left and then they bump into a large army truck, do another hard left which brings them right in the middle of a divisional camp. The lieutenant calmly gets off his motorcycle, approaches the guard and convinces him that he is an, an emissary of uh, General Montgomery. So the two men are escorted back to the general and after a very firm discussion, the general accepts to transport the Hastings and Prince Edward Regiment with all his trucks to Catanzaro. Eventually, the two armies become friendly and a soccer game is organized between the two. The Canadians will remain four days in Catanzaro for a well-deserved rest. All right, we're leaving Lorenzano right now, and um, just want to tell, just want to add to our stories that uh, on September 15, the Canadians resumed their advance. Uh, along the coast and uh, about 160 kilometers on September 17, General Montgomery told them to hurry up toward Potenza. What happened is that we, we wanted to relieve the pressure on Salerno and the advance to Naples of the 5th Army and attack the rear of the Germans in Potenza so this way they would have to split their assets on two fronts. So uh, General Simmons decided since they had so much success with the X-Force he decided to do the same thing, and this time he put uh, Colonel Bogart, commanding officer of the West Nova Scotia Regiment, in charge of the Bull Force. So the Bull Force uh, took off through the Apennine Mountains, and uh, by September uh, 17, they were at Lorenzano, in the town we are right now, where there was a little skirmish with machine guns, a little bit of mortar fire, but nothing too serious. 
And by a day later, they were at uh, in the town of Enzi. So one of the things that, um, that was really the, 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 mo the biggest difficulty that the Canadians had at this time was uh, like, that the roads were littered with mines. There were uh, the, the Germans blew craters on the in the roads and also um, the bridges, every bridges were blown. And that had a, uh, the effect to slow down the, uh, the Canadians. However, the engineers were very imaginative. So instead of uh, using barely a bridge, which takes a lot of uh, materials and takes time to build, if you're, if you're on the road really quick, they decided to do Irish bridges. And the Irish bridge is very simple. Uh, all they had to do is with the bulldozer, like they would, they would push big rocks into the gap, fill the gap, this way the water could still trickle through the, the rocks and they made it wide enough that the vehicles could uh, travel on top. And that's how they, they kept advancing and advancing. All right, so right now I'm, uh, I'm on the, the new Highway S92 and just above me on the left would be like, I'm pretty sure that was the old highway and uh, they just built this one a bit lower so the one that the Canadians would have traveled to is the one that's on my left and um, you see along the road there are like uh, small stone bridges and uh, those would be like the type of bridges that would have been blown by the Germans to stop or slow down the advance as much as possible let's go up and see what it looks like that the old highway I see that's pretty cool. Pretty cool that old bridge. I guess you can tell it was uh, that was rebuilt probably like, uh, after the war. <coughs> Try to go up here. Very slippery with all the mud. Ah. All right, so here we are. That's yeah, exactly. So that runs parallel to the road we're on, and that would have been the old Highway S92. Uh, right now I'm standing in front of the town of Anzi, and this is the last village that the Canadians met on the 18th September before arriving at Potenza on the 19th. And uh, one point that I'd like to mention is that uh, the Canadians were always frustrated as they made their way along these twisted roads. They were never fast enough to prevent the Germans to blow craters or demolish the bridges before they got on them. And, um, but, you know, on the other side of the coin, the Germans, one of the commander of the Germans, wrote in his journal how impressed he was at the speed that the Canadians uh, were at them, that keep them on their heels all the time and were not even able to prepare a good defensive positions to meet them. them. So each soldier had their own frustrations in this advance to Potenza. By the evening of 19 September, on Iowa 92, where I'm walking right now, and Lieutenant Colonel Bogart deployed a group of sappers supported by A Company to go and investigate to make sure that the three bridges leading to the town were still intact. When they reached the first bridge, they unfortunately found out the bridge had been blown. And the Germans were in the process of getting ready the second bridge to be blown. The sappers got busy right away to clear the mines while A Company engaged the paratroopers into a firefight. At 0200 hours, Chela and Delta Company joined into the battle and the, the West Novas reached into the town all the way to the, the train station. Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Bogart couldn't call any artillery support because he wasn't sure where his troops were in the town. The decision was made at brigade level to use the Wild Man 2e Regiment to go and do an outflanking from the east 
while the Carlton and York Regiment, supported by the Calgary tanks, would wait until when the, the sappers would finish their job of removing. Actually went uh, so far the town to the northern side of Potenza. At the outcome of the battle, the West Novas had lost seven men killed by a blown mine and 21 injured. And the Battle of Potenza, and actually the advance all the way to Potenza from Reggio in 16 days, has been hailed by the 13th Corps commander as a great military success. And the Canadians can be really proud of this achievement. By September 20th, the Canadians had traveled 375 kilometers from Reggio to Potenza. The losses were minimum, 32 men killed, 146 wounded, majority of them by mines. The, what took the biggest toll on the loss of the Canadians was due to illness. 1,500 men became sick with jaundice, exhaustion, malaria, and any other, other type of disease. As a matter of fact, General Simmons became sick himself with jaundice on the 22nd of September and had to stand down. Brigadier Vokes took on the, the position as acting commander of the division and Lieutenant Colonel Huffmeister took the uh, two brigade as the acting commander. From now on, Hitler will make the Italians pay dearly for their treason to the Axis power. He will start pouring crack divisions back with tanks and heavy armament into Italy. The real fight for Italy is about to begin. And we'll continue this journey as we go on through the Italian campaign and making our way north. Stay with us for more actions to come. For BIED Day Dodgers of Canada, this is Roger. Till we meet next time, Custos Memoria. Away.